All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about my EDC knife, Holy Trinity, and kind of explaining what that is and what mine are. So to go over it before we jump into what my Holy Trinity are as far as uh, EDC knife folders, let's talk about what that kind of consideration is. And now it's kind of an unofficial term in the EDC community, but it definitely is known and quite a few people refer to it. And essentially what that means is, you know, when it comes down to an EDC knife Holy Trinity, it's basically what three makers and sometimes even models of knives do you think are representative of knife making as a whole. And usually what I mean by this is, you know, when you look at something like this Hinderer, for instance, Hinderer was the first real knife maker to start integrating or integrating flippers. So before um, the XM18s, really like this whole idea of flippers, even the front flippers, but especially these ones that have tabs on the back for flipping, really weren't uh, a thing. And so when you look at knife, the knife makers, these are usually knife makers that either, you know, had a large contribution to the EDC knife community as we know it now, or played a role in really kind of starting that system. So people who, you know, kind of helped cement what it means to have a high-end everyday carry knife or even just a nice everyday carry knife because nowadays we see you know companies like Civivi or we uh, coming from China that you know are lower price points but still carry a lot of those higher quality things things like carbon fiber once again flipper designs blade steels you know premium blade steels like S30V um, you know Damascus or you know things like S35VN CPM 20CV so those types of things Things. Uh, you know, these knife makers for me, in my mind, are when I think of like the original high quality knives or knife makers and the people that had some of the largest influence over the community that we have today. These are the three companies that I see uh, as the largest players in that. Now, don't get me wrong, there are certainly other knife companies, people like Benchmade, Emerson, Buck have been around for a long time, but I think that their overall impact on the community has been a lot less than these guys as far as the EDC knife community goes. And I can kind of see that or I extrapolate that through seeing, you know, what are these designs? You know, oftentimes with people like Benchmade, they're following the trends that exist as opposed to setting trends themselves. So a good example of this would be, um, and luckily I kind of have a good example, is back in the early 20, early 20 teens and, you know, early or like kind of late uh, 2000s, you know, like 2008, 2009, uh, you know, this was what Benchmade released. This is a Benchmade 630 Skirmish, and it is a grail knife. I do love this knife a lot, but ultimately this knife was in collaboration with Blackwood Designs or... Um, Gosh, I can't remember his first name, but Blackwood helped make this knife. And of course it was a, a rendition of his skirmish, but Benchmade worked with Blackwood to make this knife to directly compete with the uh, Sebenza. So ultimately at the core, these are both um, titanium frame lock knives. They both at the time had S30V steel and S30V, even though this is S45 VN now, but um, they both had S30V. And so this knife was made by Benchmade to compete with uh, Chris Reeve. So what I mean by this is that, you know, Benchmade makes a good design. I like this knife a lot. It's definitely in my collection for a reason, but this knife was more chasing after that or adding a competitive option to something that already exists. Benchmade didn't necessarily make up the titanium frame lock market. It was more Chris Reeve, right? So anyways, now let's talk about the three brands I see as kind of the mainstays with the EDC Holy Trinity. So the first one, like I said, is Chris Reeve Knives. Now this is a large and cozy, but Chris Reeve is probably best known for the Sebenza, the Sebenza 21, the 25, the 31 are the most popular ones right now. And ultimately the Sebenza was really kind of what made high-end folders, high-end folders. They were the first titanium frame locks that came out in the early 90s. And they the whole goal was to use high-end premium materials and at the time now we kind of look back at things like s30v and we're like oh that's not really you know it's a commonplace steel now 
But you have to think that people like um, Chris Reeve, Rick Hinder were using things like S30V long before it was a mainstay or before it was a kind of common use or common practice to use for that steel. So, you know, these guys were offering high end components for their time. And once again, you see that trend to this day. This is CPM S45VN. It's a newer steel and, you know, they are using the highest end products or components to build this product that they can. And so the simplicity of the design, the uh, overall build and manufacture of these things is top notch. And really, even though I'm not a huge fan of the new prices of the CRKs, you know, these things are built like a bank vault. There is no play and these things are rock solid. And everything, even when I've taken this part and not, uh, this knife apart, um, it is just absolute, the, the tolerances are super tight, super well built and yeah these things are awesome awesome blades so that is the first one for me and like I said they're the kind of foundation in my opinion for high end what it really means for everyday carry we're not just talking you know like a nice knife we're talking knives that are designed to use the highest components with a good you know like high tolerances um, and high fit and finish okay next one up is going to be Rick Hinderer. And this is an XM18. This is probably what he's best known for. This one, of course, is customized, has a recurve blade, CPM 20 CV steel. So this is a newer Hinderer XM18, but still really awesome blade. Absolutely love it. But Hinderer and the XM18, like I was kind of alluding to in the beginning of the video, these were really the first actual serious flipper knives out there. Now, there were, you know, other knives that exist, maybe, you know, like cheap gas gas cheaper gas station knives that you know kind of had some of the ideas and the desires of this but these were the first real knives to come about that had a purpose design with you know being a flipper knife and now we see you know many different knives you know like the crkt pilar the Civivi Elementum, um, you know, different knives like that that have flipper components to them. And so it's definitely more well known. But these were the guys that started it, or Rick Hinderer with the XM18 was the beginning, was the start. And so, you know, I'm not saying that without C or without Hinderer that the uh, flipper knife wouldn't exist, but this was the beginning. And once again, undoubtedly, it has had a large impact on the community because you see a lot of flipper knives out there. And of course, the designs have evolved. You have front flippers, you have, you know, traditional flippers like this and different stuff. But uh, ultimately, Hinderer was the one that started it or really brought the flipper to a, the mainstream, showing that it could be a quality piece of equipment. Now, lastly, is kind of the dark horse of the group. And for me, when I was growing up, you know, uh, back in the early 20 teens, these guys were, these, these two brands, Hinder and Chris Reeve, were super well known. And Strider was also super well known. And they were known for just building knives that could take an obscene amount of abuse. And these were designed as knives like for the military, for tactical people. If you wanted to run in those groups, Striders were very prevalent in SF groups. They were very prevalent in the military as a whole. Of course, the SMF, standing for Strider Military Folder, um, you know, was a knife that was literally sold in contracts to the military, which isn't super uncommon. Of course, Benchmade has their Infidel on contracts. Microtech has contracts with the military. So it's not impossible, but Strider was known for sure for being a military brand and a company that if you wanted a knife that was going to be able to be ran through hell, you could do pretty much anything with, these were it. And so I think largely, you know, Medford kind of also cemented the name for robust tanky knives. But when Strider came about, and I do believe Strider came just a little bit before, at least on the mainstream, before Medford, um, you know, with things like the SMF, this is an SNG, so it's a little bit thinner in blade stock, which it's still definitely thicker than most knives, thicker than, you know, the Hinder or the Chris Reeve, but uh, with the, the SMF, very thick, very overbuilt, very tanky knives that were built with that purpose of being able to take abuse. And not only that, too, the uh, Striders are also um, heat treated to a lower degree. So these steels are softer, which means that they don't have 
quite as good in edge retention, but they also have better durability. So really the Strider was built with the maximum amount of um, durability in mind. In fact, even they'll tell you, and once again, I don't know the validity to it, but you know, they'll tell you that the reason why they chose a G10 slab next to the titanium uh, frame lock was that G10 is a more rigid material. So it helps make the knife uh, more rigid in hand and in use. So the knife is really designed from the ground up, at least marketed. Once again, you know, there may be some questionability to it, but they're marketed to truly be the most durable, the most well thought out knives for hard use situations. So I think ultimately when it comes down to it, Strider kind of cemented their name as kind of the first real offering of hard use high end knives that are designed to be absolutely, um, absolutely, that are designed to be absolutely used to hell and uh, keep on kicking. So those are by Holy Trinity. Once again, part of it is also nostalgia for me growing up. Those were the brands that, man, if you wanted a high-end knife, it was going to be a Strider, it was going to be a Hinder, it was going to be a, a CRK. You know, these were, if you wanted a quality knife and you were going out for quality, you know, Benchmade did exist, Emerson existed, Kershaw, CRKT, they all existed and they were all making their own knives. But if you really wanted the top of the line, you were going to grab a Hinder, a Strider, or a Chris Reeve. So... That's kind of uh, what partially influences my Holy Trinity. They are kind of known as the original Holy Trinity uh, in the EDC community. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.